In December 2020, China's Chang'e 5 spacecraft landed on the moon, scooped up lunar soil, and began its journey back to Earth. Scientists expected dust, rock fragments, and a glimpse at ancient volcanic activity. But when they examined the material, they were stunned. A never-before-seen mineral lay hidden in plain sight, a crystal structure formed in conditions more extreme than anything we've replicated in our labs. The real question, how did it get there? And what does it tell us about the moon's mysterious past? Imagine holding a crystal that predates human history by billions of years. Not just by a little. This thing existed before plants, animals, or even oceans appeared on Earth. That's the kind of find scientists were looking at when they opened some of the Chang'e 5 lunar samples and saw something unlike anything they'd seen before. Here's how it got to them. Chang'e 5 didn't land just anywhere. Its landing site was in a relatively young lava plain in the moon's Oceanus Procellarum region. That's important because it's very different from the older highland regions visited during the Apollo era. The rocks here had flowed as molten basalt much more recently in lunar history, meaning they could hold clues to a later stage of volcanic activity. The spacecraft scooped up about two kilograms of soil and rock fragments from the top layers before sending them back to Earth in a sealed container. When the samples arrived, the basic expectation was straightforward. Scientists thought they'd see familiar volcanic basalt, plagioclase, pyroxene, olivine, minerals that had already been catalogued from Apollo and lunar missions. Essentially, they anticipated confirming what was already known about younger lunar rocks. But under the microscope, it didn't go that way. A small, transparent crystal caught their attention. At first, it looked like a tiny grain embedded within the basalt. Chemical analysis showed it wasn't just an odd form of an existing mineral. It had a completely unique atomic structure. The team named it Changesite-Y, after the Chang'e program. This crystal's composition included rare phosphate embedded in a precise repeating lattice, and its geometry suggested it had grown in an environment vastly different from what's common on Earth. Earth's surface conditions almost never produce something like this naturally. The crystal likely formed deep beneath the lunar surface under extreme temperature and pressure, crystallizing slowly in a chemically distinct molten pocket before being brought up to the surface by volcanic eruptions. The size of the individual crystals was so small that a single one could easily fit on the tip of a needle with room to spare. Even under electron microscopy, the detail is intricate. Perfectly formed edges in three dimensions that can only happen when growth occurs without significant disruption. Its rarity comes from two factors. The right mixture of elements has to be present and the environment has to sustain stable temperatures and pressures long enough for the crystal to form. You don't get that combination very often on the moon, let alone in material shallow enough for a sample return mission to collect. None of the Apollo or Soviet lunar missions had ever brought back anything like it because they never landed in this specific type of terrain with these particular conditions in its geologic past. Identifying it wasn't a quick process. Scientists had to separate individual grains from the sample, isolate the crystal using micro-manipulators, then run it through X-ray diffraction to read its atomic structure. They confirmed the elemental makeup by focusing a beam of electrons on it and measuring the emitted spectra. Every step had to rule out the possibility that it was a terrestrial contaminant or a variant of something already in the lunar catalogue. The result was huge. This was the first time in over 40 years that a truly new lunar mineral had been discovered. It's a confirmation that the moon is more complex than we thought, even in relatively young volcanic regions. And the crystal story doesn't end here, because how it formed points directly to a possible revision of what we think we know about the moon's own volcanic history. This mineral isn't just a curiosity, it's a time capsule from a violent lunar past. Every atom in its structure is like a frozen record of extreme conditions that once existed beneath the moon's surface. To really understand its significance, you need to know what scientists thought they understood 
about that part of the moon before Chang'e 5 ever landed. For decades, the general view was that the moon's volcanic activity had ended about 3 billion years ago. The heat inside a small rocky body, like the moon, should have escaped into space relatively quickly, leaving it geologically quiet. That explained why Apollo mission samples, taken from older terrain, mostly dated to well before that point in time. The region where Chang'e 5 landed, however, already stood out to scientists when viewed from lunar orbit. Its smoother surface and fewer impact craters suggested much younger flows of lava compared to the battered highlands. The working idea was that these flows were still ancient, but perhaps just a bit younger than those Apollo crews walked on. When the Chang'e 5 samples were tested, that assumption started to crumble. Isotopic analysis, which measures the ratios of atoms like uranium and lead to determine age, showed that the surrounding basalt formed about 2 billion years ago. That's 1 billion years more recent than most of the Apollo-era rocks. In geological terms, that's almost like finding a campfire that's still warm when you thought it went out long ago. This single date tells us that the moon's volcanic activity continued far later than older models predicted. For lava to erupt, that recently, the interior of the moon had to stay hot much longer than expected. In smaller bodies, without atmospheres or tectonic activity like Earth's, heat normally escapes much faster, which means either our understanding of lunar cooling is incomplete, or something was keeping the heat trapped. One possibility is that there are areas in the moon's mantle that stayed unusually rich in radioactive elements, like potassium, thorium, and uranium. As those elements decay, they release heat, potentially creating warm pockets capable of melting rock even after most of the moon had cooled. Another idea is that the mantle's composition or movement beneath the crust allowed localized hotspots to persist. These processes could have acted like slow-burning embers, occasionally flaring into volcanic activity over vast stretches of time. The formation of Changesite-Y supports the high heat theory. The crystal's growth required not only intense heat, but also significant pressure, suggesting that it formed deep underground. That points to molten rock reservoirs far beneath the surface, where pressure from overlying layers kept minerals stable as they slowly arranged themselves. Volcanic eruptions must have later brought these materials to the surface, embedding them in basalt flows that cooled into the rocks sampled by Chang'e 5. If this scenario is correct, it means the moon's interior was not a uniform, steadily cooling ball, but a complex and dynamic system with regions behaving very differently over time. Rather than shutting down completely, lunar volcanism may have persisted in isolated locations, powered by internal quirks we still don't fully understand. It changes the moon from a simple cooling body to one with a longer, patchier history of activity. Discoveries like this don't just fill in gaps, they change the shape of the entire timeline. And if a single landing site can show us that the moon's story is much more recent and active than we thought, it raises a bigger question. What else is still locked away in those untouched regions we've never visited? One tiny crystal has shifted what scientists thought they knew about the moon's past. It's proof that even the most familiar places in our solar system still hold surprises waiting to be found. If you're curious where this could lead, keep an eye on future missions from China, NASA, and other space agencies. Every landing site offers the chance to uncover details that could reshape our understanding of how planets and moons evolve over time. If a single grain of lunar soil can rewrite part of the moon's history, imagine what the next rock brought back to Earth might reveal.